I was forced into it by a very perceptive and strong mother who uh, walked me to my violin lesson every day, five days a week, before kindergarten. I totally hated it. What happened? When did you start liking it? Oh, about 15 years later. that but, classical background. Yes, I played in the grammar school orchestra, then a little bit in high school orchestra. So when you got turned on, what happened to you? I mean, when you started really liking it and going off on your own. I just decided to do it uh, for a living. And uh, at first it was, uh, you know, like a religion. It was extremely intense devotion to uh, actually a rather very specific kind of music, which was bluegrass music. And uh, I started, started there. Yeah, and now you're out of there. No, no, I, that's, now that's part of me. But you're into something else besides just bluegrass. Right. Bluegrass groups, and uh, I was in a jug band, and in rock and roll groups. Now I'm in different kind of music. Yeah, a combination of all those, right? Yeah, I mean, they're all different styles of music. The first thing was uh, Bill Monroe and the Bluegrass Boys, and that was the definition of bluegrass music, playing in that band. He invented the style. Um, then I played uh, in the Jim Queskin jug band, which again was a very stylized kind of thing. I guess I played in C-Train after that, which was electric. That was drums and bass and everything. And that was a whole different thing. With I used uh, all the electronic effects and everything. Then what? Then uh, I launched my solo career, which we are now in the midst of. <laughs> sit around at home, you know, by yourself and just piddle around on the uh, violin? No. When, when do you play it? I mean, only with people or yeah. only then? Is it that kind of instrument? No, I'm that kind of player. <laughs> How about your hands? 
Yeah. Did you ever any exercises or anything like that? Not really, no. I, I don't think about my hands. It's uh, probably a good thing, too, that I don't. I very seldom detach myself from my hands and think about them. Like I do say about my hair. I think about my hair more than my hands. And I, would, I wouldn't insure them or anything either, because that oh. would be inviting disaster. For me, the most valuable part is, is somewhere in between my ears. That's the part that I think about. I mean, that's something happens in there and it ends up in my fingers. <laughs> Tell me what that is. You mean stylistically with yeah, kind of music? Yeah. Uh, jazz, rock, classical, bebop, modern, bluegrass, country. Wowie. Folk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just a combination of everything that uh, I've ever played, and uh, the tune was written by the mandolin player. first opening phrases are written and then uh, we improvise on chord changes from there on mm -hmm. and none of that's written. It's planned though to a certain extent like uh, in a certain part of the tune we have an agreement that uh, David will play a phrase, and then I will try to imitate it. But what we play is, is totally unplanned, and I never know what he's going to throw at me. And he never knows what I'm going to throw back at him. That's what makes it, uh, yeah, it makes it interesting. It adds an element of suspense. 